This is Twit. You used to be at SUSE, and um, you know I'm, I've been watching uh, Red Hat uh, busy becoming IBM over the last month. Um, uh, the, 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 the landscape has really changed for, uh, you know, the, the ordinary user of a computer thinks of Red Hat when they think of Linux, I think. Uh, what do you think is, is, do you think it's good what's happening there? Do you think this is a, a natural part of growing up that we're seeing SUSE becoming basically a, a, a corporate entity and Red Hat laying off all of its community people? Do you think that's a natural evolution or do you think that that's a crisis? Well, I also I was at IBM before SUSE, so I've, I've yes, seen both yes. sides of it. Um, I mean, I, Red Hat would love for you to say that oh, they think their marketing department says Red Hat, Linux is Red Hat. You know, that's, that was their goal. SUSE's goal is for Europe. No, Linux is SUSE. Um, but I mean, one thing that that the distros have to contend with is people just want to solve a problem, right? And if you want to use a Linux distribution to solve your problem, wonderful. If you want to buy a box with a distribution on it and get it commercially supported, SUSE and Red Hat or IBM is there to do that for you. IBM has been in the software support business for forever. That's where they make their money. Um, so that makes sense. SUSE has been in that business for 25, 30 years now. That's where they make their money. That's a good business to be in. It's not a huge business. The majority of the world actually by far runs Android take all the Android stuff out of it, everything else around the error, majority runs Debian and the world cloud systems run Debian over 70%. It's, it's insane what Debian, what the world runs in Debian. Um, and Debian's a great distribution and solid and there. But if you look at, if you want to solve a problem, you go rent yourself a cloud computer, throw a free distribution on there or a distribution from that cloud provider. I mean, Google, Amazon, um, they all provide you a free version of Linux for their Oracle does as well for their cloud because they don't want you to have to pay any extra money. Um, anyway, you go from there. So you solve your own problems. Um, is the enterprise distribution business has always been a small business. Um, it's interesting thing to see if you can hold on to that, but it's still probably the same about size that it always has been, but just the other size is so much bigger. I mean, even Microsoft has said, they're not making as much from the enterprise cloud on Windows as they are on Linux. So right, but, but I mean, I you know I was very disturbed to see um, the the uh, head of Fedora being laid off by Red Hat, uh, and also to see so many of the community people being laid off from the OSPO, and to see OpenSource.com being shut down. Um, you, you know, do, do, you, do you think we've, 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 we've seen, we, this is now the end of the era for community open source in companies like Red Hat and SUSE and IBM? No, I do not think that. I mean, companies, open source, open source program groups and com companies are getting bigger and bigger and there's more and more of them forming. I think you're going to see it spread out to more and more companies. I mean, look at the big giant industrial companies, Philips, Siemens, Bosch, they have open source development group. They have developers on there working on open source projects in the community, right? So these are, it's just spreading out to be more and more. Um, the Linux Foundation posted something saying job prospects of open source developers are even higher now than they ever have been. Um, yes, it's always sad to see companies lay people off. I do not understand those business decisions. I'm not in that type of work. Um, I think I do know a number of people who were laid off and got a job instantly afterwards. So if you have the skills, I worry for the new graduates coming out. My son's in university and he's, his friends and peers are worried about that. And I mean, as someone who grew up in, in out of college in one of the major recessions in the world, I've been there, seen the dot-com boom, booms and busts. Um, good skills of developers are highly needed and whatnot. And companies realize it's cheaper and faster to work in the community and use open source tools than ever before. So I was at the open source, um, the cloud conference in, Am in Amsterdam a couple of weeks ago, and there was 10,000 people there. It was insane. It was like, wow, I guess this Linux thing is actually going to succeed. Um, <laughs> so, so, so what, what should we be telling our, you know, uh, f f what should we be telling our kids to focus on uh, if they're going to head into software now? Uh, my son so, I mean, focused I on web, web programming. <laughs> Okay. I mean, so what have you told what have you told him to go do? Because we should all do that. 
I mean, I would say systems level work because that's what I, that's the level I work at, right? I see all these hardware companies trying to solve problems and they are all companies using software now. Web development, everybody needs a web developer and stuff like that. That's also a great skill. But I mean, the generic skill of programming, of breaking a problem down into smaller pieces and applying that to a language, no matter what the language is, that's the skill to learn how to debug, how to handle these types of data structures, how to solve a problem. And then you can get a job in any language doing any types of things. But there's so much, so many jobs out there. I mean, just take music, for instance, like all these electronics companies are now all their guitars and all these amplifiers. Everything is all software now. It's, there's tons and tons of speakers. All the speakers are all software now. I mean, Doc's favorite company, Sonos, has been running Linux <laughs> for what, 20 years now. That's all Linux and the software heavy stuff. And that's now in all speakers. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of software jobs out there for a lot of industries that never had it before. Uh, my little amplifier here that I get has software and firmware running a USB stack, handling the signals and whatnot. It's not running Linux, but it's running other operating system. Zephyr. Open, Zephyr is a wonderful little open operating system that's tinier than Linux that I'd recommend people using. Um, so that, yeah. But just the basic skills of programming. I mean, as a parent, your job is to hopefully impart skills onto your child that they can be successful and stand on their own, right? So give them a skill. <laughs> hey, we should talk Linux. It's the operating system that runs the internet, a bunch of game consoles, cell phones, and maybe even the machine on your desk. You already knew all that. What you may not know is that Twit now has a show dedicated to it, the Untitled Linux Show. Whether you're a Linux pro, a burgeoning sysadmin, or just curious what the big deal is, you should join us on the Club Twit Discord every Saturday afternoon for news, analysis, and tips to sharpen your Linux skills. And then make sure you subscribe to the Club Twit exclusive Untitled Linux Show. Wait, you're not a Club Twit member yet? Well, go to twit.tv slash club twit and sign up. Hope to see you there. <laughs>